you know, there's tech news, and then there's, well, you know, like, tech news, and you're about to get one of those for sure. 5G has been the fastest cellular network technology since it really started rolling out in 2019, just in time to inject it into our bodies. But now China's state-owned telecom, China Mobile, has announced it's rolling out something called 5.5G, which sources indicate has about another half a G. Xiaomi says their 14 Ultra flagship phone supports the tech, reaching speeds of more than five gigabits per second while Oppo CEO Pete Lau posted a photo of his company's Find X7 Ultra with a little 5GA in the top bar. That's because the official name for 5G and a little bit more is actually 5G Advanced, according to the group of standards bodies responsible for developing such tech, collectively known as 3GPP, which is short for third gen PP. <laughs> That's only 0.5 of a joke. <laughs> We're having fun. It appears that Huawei started popularizing the term 5.5G last year as their brand name for 5G Advanced, which is fair enough because that just sounds like the premium tier of 5G and I don't need another monthly subscription, unless it's to floatplane.com, I'm sorry. But Americans don't have to worry about any fractional bonus Gs anytime soon, as the FCC and US carriers can't decide whether the six gigahertz spectrum band should belong to 5G Advanced or 6G, which I think will be provided to the population as pills this time. OpenAI's flagship large language model, GPT-4 Turbo, has been surpassed by another model on Chatbot Arena for the first time since ChatGPT dropped onto society like a bomb being ridden by Will Smith eating spaghetti. That's how it felt. The new king of LLMs, according to the crowdsourced Chatbot Arena leaderboard, is Anthropic's Claude 3 Opus, which launched a few weeks ago along with less powerful Claude 3 variants Sonnet and Haiku, which are neck and neck with some less powerful GPT-4 variants themselves. The upset is even more upsetting for OpenAI, given that Anthropic was founded by former OpenAI employees. And now they're getting another $2.7 billion investment from Amazon so Jeff Bezos can talk to better AIs who understand him like no human can. All I want is to drink their blood, is that so hard? But in equally interesting AI news, XAI just unveiled their updated Grok 1.5 chatbot, which is better at math and has a larger 128,000 token context window, which will probably just make the boomer cringe humor worse. OpenAI announced they're testing usage-based monetization on the GPT store, which could eventually provide a revenue stream for developers of all those custom GPTs that are awesome for generating not just copyright violations, but TOS violations as well. OpenAI also revealed Voice Engine, a model that can replicate any voice off of a 15 second sample. Some of the most amazing habitats on earth are found in the rainforest. In typical OpenAI fashion though, they're letting you know that they have it, but that it's far too dangerous to release until they get more investors on board. To be fair though, it seems like Voice Engine or any of the other pretty good AI voice cloning tools out there could easily dupe something like Chase Bank, which has let customers log in using voice identification since 2018 and haven't yet reconsidered that decision for some reason. You sound weird today. Anyway, here's your money. <laughs> Apple's mysterious machine that can update iPhones while they're still sealed in the box is real. A photo of the device called Presto was published by French language tech site, A Generation. I thought that was a type of pasta. No, that's Prego. <laughs> Presto is reportedly being rolled out to Apple stores across the US this month, allowing iPhone users to skip the annoying initial updating process and get right to that undeserved feeling of superiority. But while Presto is undoubtedly cool, it would be more cool if it worked for AirPods, which cannot be manually updated at all. Putting your devices close together and hoping the update happens would feel better if there was a magic box involved. Speaking of updates though, Google let slip on a landing page for Android messages that iOS support for RCS or rich chat services will arrive this fall. It looks like they didn't mean to let that slip though. Google's now taken that part of the site down, but TechCrunch confirmed it's still there in the source code. When that rolls out, iPhone users, you have my permission to feel superior. Only the richest of chats for you. <laughs>
How expensive was this chat? Now it's time for Quick Bits, brought to you by Vessi. Vessi claims their shoes are extremely waterproof while keeping your feet cool in the summer and warm in the winter. Their Stormburst high top shoes combine the comfort of a sneaker with the grip and coverage of an outdoor boot. Vessi has added extra layering for added warmth as well as extra grip to prevent you from slipping and sliding in unfavorable weather conditions even though maybe that would lead to a new dance move. So I, it's pros and cons. Stormbursts can make great gifts with the unpredictable spring weather coming up. So check out the Vessi Stormburst and other styles at Vessi.com slash techlinked and get 15% off your first purchase at checkout. What would life be like without any quick bits? I don't know, they, they never let me outside. The China-specific GeForce RTX 4090D can apparently be overclocked to non-D levels. Double D. <laughs> The 4090D is a cut down version of Nvidia's flagship 40 series cards meant to comply with US sanctions on China that the full fat card did not comply with. Now, a Hong Kong based tech and review site has shown that the ROG Strix 4090D specifically is able to be overclocked, achieving performance comparable to a Founders Edition 4090, but not defeating the point of D's nuts. <laughs> Qualcomm has apparently been giving demos to select members of the press to show off their ARM-powered Snapdragon X Elite laptop chips gaming prowess. The company flew several influencers to their headquarters in San Diego to give demos of Baldur's Gate 3, Control, and Redout 2. While many are calling the games playable in their coverage, there are some important caveats, especially to the Baldur's Gate 3 demos. It looks like these machines were apparently able to achieve about 30 FPS at 1080p with low settings, but the demos are all of the prologue fight, which is set in a small area, not the demanding open world of the rest of the game. That's kind of like demonstrating you can swim by standing up in the shallow end of the pool. A new GPU made entirely by a one-man operation can run Quake at 60 frames per second. Pack it up, NVIDIA. Fury GPU is the brainchild of game software developer Dylan Barry, who has been working on the project in his spare time for the last four years. The GPU runs off a custom Vulkan-like graphics API and does not feature programmable shaders. Barry intends to open source the whole project after he sorts out some legal issues. He's wanted in Tijuana. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, since the project is tangentially related to his day job, he needs to make sure he's not breaking any agreements that he's signed. Seems like something he should have done before doing this, but... But as soon as he does that, get ready to land party like it's 1996, baby. Like it's literally that year, because that's the games you can play. New York City's My City chatbot, which is intended to answer questions related to starting a business, has instead been caught freestyling and telling users to break the law. To be clear, the bot isn't straightforwardly advocating a life of crime. It's just hallucinating an alternative set of laws where it's not illegal to discriminate against tenants on rental assistance, and it's totally cool to fire an employee whistleblower in retribution for reporting safety violations. Don't worry though, it's an equal opportunity merchant of chaos because it also claims that you can't fire an employee for taking a trip to the zoo on company time or evict a tenant for setting fire to the building. So. All bets are off. You ask it, am I allowed to legally do this? It's like, hey man, live your life. <laughs> and researchers at ETH University in Zurich, Switzerland have used machine learning to teach a quadrupedal robot called Animal Parkour. The Animal, which looks and moves like a possessed lawnmower, uses a camera <laughs> and an advanced neural network to learn how to navigate obstacles through trial and error and murder. The robot is intended to one day be used to scout unstable terrain that might be dangerous to human workers, or terrain in which human workers could hide from it. And on a scale of one to 10, our next episode is at least an eight. So come back on Monday for a talk linked on Florida's social media ban for kids under 14. We're taking the day off, so you can listen to what Jacob and I had to say about that. As long as you're 14 or older. <laughs>